Okay, good afternoon. Okay, welcome to the next uh, session. Uh, this one is uh, all about uh, uh, one of the most difficult fracture of the pelvic fracture. This uh, uh, section is uh, about the posterior ring injury. Uh, we will talk about the, all about the posterior ring uh, pelvic injury. Begin with the sacral fractures, diagnosis and classification and the treatment strategy from the Dr. Sulapong from Bamlung Lat Hospital. Dr. Sulapong, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my first talk of this session will be about the sickle fracture, which we will focus mainly on diagnosis, classification, and then the treatment strategies. So, I try to cover uh, important point within this 10 minutes talk. For diagnosis, from literature, the le uh, just recent review, I think everybody know that motor vehicle accident nowadays is a um, majority of the cost of the circle fracture, which is considered to be high energy fracture. And falling from high is another cause, which like uh, we, we know that we call it in the past suicidal jumper. It, it, it is interesting to notice that about three-fourths of the case present to the ER without any neurological deficit. And the, one of the most concerning of the sacral fracture is that Sometimes we delay the diagnosis that cause delayed treatment and result in a malunion or nonunion of the fracture which is quite difficult to treat later on. Let's look, look at this x-ray. You can appreciate that if you look at this x-ray, you can see that there is some comminution of the sacrum over there. Even at the front, you can see some deformity right there. So I think this x-ray is quite, quite obvious that the patient had the pelvic link injury and then sickle fracture, which you can see on this lateral x-ray and confirmed by the CAT scan. Look at this case. When you look at this x-ray, which is when you have the polytrauma patient, you have one x-ray of the pelvic link. If you look lastly, you can you cannot see any damage to the anterior ring. You can almost see nothing at the posterior ring. But if you look carefully, there is a separation of the pubic symphysis over here. And when we investigate more, we can see actually there is a sacral fracture. And there is a zone three fracture as well. So the point that I need to point out right here is that even, even you have the look fairly benign X-ray, but don't miss the sacral fracture. The rule is that sacrum is the key part of the pelvic ring. So whenever you can identify the anterior ring injury, you have to keep in mind that there has to be the posterior ring injury and most likely to be the sacrum fracture unless you can prove it. And CT scan is, uh, the, I think, is a must nowadays in case of the pelvic link injury. You need a CAT scan to prove and to identify the posterior link injury. About the classification, we know about Dennis classification that separate into three zones. Zone one, half of the case. About one third of the case involved the zone two and about 17% in the zone three. You can see that the more center, the more neurological deficit. Then this classification is particularly useful for predicting the neurological deficit, but it lacks of the instability information, but even though we still use it to, to identify, to, to classify the, the sacral fracture very often. Lloyd Camille further classified the zone three of Dennis, and then later on with a modified Lloyd Camille include the type four. Type one to type four is increasing in the, step, in the instability and high risk of the neurological deficit. 
Further on, there is the Isler classification and also the schematic, uh, the morphologic classification is mostly involved the zone three and that, that is the mostly is the fracture that caused the spinal pelvic instability or dissociation. And just recently, AO spike group, they classified the sacral fracture into three types like a regular fashion of the AO, type A, type B, and type C. Type A usually is a, is a minor fracture and considered to be the stable fracture that do not need any surgical intervention. Type B, actually B1 is, is the need zone three. B2 is the need zone one. And BT is the need zone two. For the site type C, this is the high, highest instability and it is a spinal pelvic injury, including C, C0. C0 is the impact fracture. It is a non-displaced sacral U type, which is usually the insufficiency fracture in the elderly. C1 to C3 is increased in the severe degree of severity. The group, the group of the AO spine surgeon try to classify this in order to make a guideline for the treatment. And the fixation of the sacral fracture, the, the most common fixation will be the ilocecal school fixation or the spinal pelvic fixation. The group of the AO spine surgeon, they propose that in the B group, you may choose between the ilocecal screw or the spinal pelvic fixation regardless the, uh, regarding the pattern and the morphology of the fracture. In case of the C type, the preferred type of fixation will be the spinal pelvic fixation. So the treatment strategy depends on what kind of fixation, uh, we talk about what kind of fixation that we need for the fracture. Another question that come up many, many times in the sequence of the approach. And the last one is the uh, necessity to do the neural decompression. Do you, you have the choice of fixation, starting from ileocecal screw fixation, the ileoilac tension band plate, or I have the sacrum separately, or the spinal pelvic fixation. Let's take a look at this case. This is my favorite case to, 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 to demonstrate the stability of the sacral fracture. This young lady had car accident, my weakness of the left leg. She has a head injury and another, another associate injury that delayed the treatment. You can appreciate the fracture of the sacrum right here and the anterior pelvic link. Nothing much can be seen right here, but from the CAT scan, we can see there is the zone three, the lycomil fracture here, and also there is a fracture of the sacrum. The sacrum over the right side, it, it looked as not, not as bad as over the left side. But if you would like to put any screw right here, you can see that there is almost no corridor to put the ileocecal screw. This one has an adequate corridor to put the ileocecal screw. So another choice to fix this side might be the spinal pelvic fixation, or we may use the tension band plate to avoid any injury to this sacral ala. What I designed this case is that I did just an anterior fixation and put the ilocecal screw over this side only and leave this as, this, I consider this as an impact fracture which is quite stable. And the, the fracture healed very well at one year follow up and like right now is about, I, I, I still follow her about 15 years already and she looks very well without any deficit. This is an example of that sometimes you may not need to do any aggressive treatment for the sacral fracture if you consider it as a stable impact fracture. Let's look at another case. This is a 25-year-old male. You can see the comminution fracture over the sacral ala right here. 
There is some fracture here as well, and the anterior link fracture. You can see the comminution, and the first surgeon decided to do the percutaneous screw fixation here. Post-operation, the patient developed severe light leg pain and more weakness of the light leg, and this is the x-ray after the fixation. You can see that this, this, is, this is something that we may call the contraindication for the ilosacral screw. If you cannot reduce the fracture and you try to put the screw, it might end up with the neurological injury like this, the, so the screw placed into the neural neural canal. So the choice, if you would like to decide whether you go for the ilocecal screw or the spinal pelvic, ilocecal screw fixation used to fix unstable fracture that amenable to close reduction. And you have to identify the corridor for the safe screw placement. Otherwise, you should not use the ilocecal screw fixation. For example, the case like this, I think this is a good candidate to use the ilocecal screw for the sacral fracture. But if you have the highly displayed comminuted fracture and stable injury, for example, like the case that I just showed to you, I think this is an indication that you should go for the spinal pelvic fixation. The variation of the spinal pelvic fixation is a triangular spinal pelvic fixation. We'd be going to have another talk about this. Just to briefly mention that this is the fixation that you have the vertical stabilization and horizontal stabilization. You achieve vertical stabilization by the screw that, that connect the lumbar spine to the pelvic link. And you have the horizontal stabilization, which might be the ilocecal screw fixation, or if you cannot identify the corridor to fix the screw, you may change to the iliac plate or the tension blend plate like here. So let's look at the care that I mentioned to you. So we fix it by, let's start the anterior half of the ring first, and then we Flip the patient prone and do the posterior open reduction and stabilization with a triangular fixation, like this. So this is before and after. At the follow-up, the patient went well. This is another case. Uh, 24, 22-year-old female car accident. She had a weakness of the right side which you can appreciate the severe deformity over the light sacrum here and severely internal rotate of the light hemipelvis include, and also the fracture right there. And this is a CAT scan that shows the comminution of the sacrum. Definitely, you cannot do any ilocecal screw here, so you need to use the lumbopelvic fixation to reduce it, that, but that after some open reduction. So what we design in this case is that we go posterior first, we open reduction and then reduce the pelvic link, try to external rotate the, the, the light hemipelvis, put the extension band, put the screw, put the uh, lumbopelvic fixation as a triangular fixation and then turn the patient supine to fix the anterior link. And this is the restoration of the pelvic link in the inlet view. And this is the CAT scan before and after we can collect the, the, the displacement and fix it. So, and this is the follow up at one month and one year we remove the implant. These two latest cases, you can see that the fracture, the, the, the degree of the injury is quite similarity, but the approach is different. The first case that I talk about, we start from the front. The second case, we start from the back. So that comes to, to, to maybe your mind, my mind as well, about the sequence of approach. I, I, I don't think that still have a rule that we should start anterior or posterior first, but 
we have to keep in mind that posterior stabilization, especially spinal pelvic fixation, is very rigid. Anterior fixation is less rigid, a little bit more forgiving. This is an example is that if you cannot let saw anterior link and do opt to the posterior fixation first, then you leave a huge deformity on the anterior link. So before you decide to do the posterior fixation, you may have to consider the anterior, whether you need to collect it before or after. So these two cases, this case, a huge, uh, significant displacement here, we decide to do anterior first. This case, I think the anterior is quite quite um, in, 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 in a good alignment, so we decide to do the posterior first. The last example is about the neurological injury. This cat has an accident, and then with the weakness of the leg, I will go very, I will go quickly. This cat had neurological deficit, and we can identify the, the pressure right here. You can see the very tight spinal canal over there. Then we decide that it's better to do the neural decompression. So when, when will you consider the neural decompression? Mostly you can do indirect decompression by the fracture reduction. But direct decompression might be needed in case that you can identify any fragment that encroaching onto the spinal canal or compress the nerve root. Overall, the rate of neural improvement approximately 80% regardless of treatment, but often not completely recover. And this is the result of this case after the compression over there. And at follow up, you can see the CAT scan after, after the operation remove the lamina over there, the complex, and at three months follow up, the neurological deficit has recovered quite well. I think I have no time then, so I make, okay. So when we dealing with the sickle fracture, you have to analyze the fracture characteristic. Choose the proper method of fixation. You, you need to know the, 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 the technique of the fixation very well and choose the proper one. Don't forget to let start the whole pelvic ring. This is very important. If you leave the anterior ring free, then you may destroy your posterior fixation later on. If you have neural intact or deficit without compromised neural canal, so mostly non-operative treatment for the nerve, but if you have neural deficit and you can identify the compromised neural element with the fracture fragment, better to do the decompression and stabilization. Thank you very much.